All right, here is the Lippert RV Toolkit. Uh, just arrived today, uh, courtesy of Lippert Scouts. Uh, thank you very much, Lippert Scouts. And uh, this toolkit uh, basically says you'll no never know when you have to do a repair job on the fly. Save your trip, self a trip to the hardware store and stay on course with your RV toolkit that's equipped with a variety of quick fix essentials. So uh, we're gonna open the, the box up and see what all is included. The uh, picture on the front gives you an idea of a handy carry bag and a variety of quick fix items. We'll turn it around here to the back and it gives you an exact description of what's included. And it appears to be about um, 16 different categories of items. I say categories of items. Uh, for example, uh, this fuse box in there, the fuse set has within it, uh, looks like six different types of fuses as well. And these uh, wire connectors and screws, assorted screw kits uh, have a variety of sizes and dimensions as well. So we'll take a look at this. We'll unpack it and uh, let you know what it looks like inside the box. And this is how it comes inside the box. We'll take them out kind of one at a time. Start with a roll of duct tape, 55 yard, 1.88 inch. Next, we have a assortment of dust masks. And there's the specs on those if you're interested in, in that. And there's actually uh, two packs of the face masks. Next, we have a wide-angled headlamp. Uh, appears to come with the batteries. So uh, it says batteries included. So a headlamp here, wide angle LED headlamp. And I think they, uh, they gave you plenty of black electrical tape. There's uh, five of these uh, three quarter inch rolls, each of them 60 foot in length. So plenty of electrical tape. So this next item is a voltage, continuity, and current tester. I'll set that aside. And we have a uh, multimeter. And uh, this is uh, what I'd say is one of those essentials for a, any RVer to help you check to see if you have current and see if you have power, both DC and AC. So. Uh, little multimeter tester and we'll check that out here in a moment to see if it came with uh, with batteries or if it needs batteries all right another essential a tire gauge and you need to have a gauge that's rated for the psi for your tires so check that on your tires see what the uh, the max cold uh, pressure is make sure that any gauge that you purchase uh, covers that. And this one goes up to 100 PSI. So that's fine for my tires. They're E-rated tires, max cold 80 PSI. So this will work. All right, we have an assortment of wire connectors here. Now these are the, uh, the twist type connectors versus the uh, flip type connectors. So uh, assortment of 158 pieces of wire connectors. And a variety of screws here, an assortment of screws. There you see about oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different sizes of Phillips flathead self-tapping screws. And a couple of handy dandy uh, utility knives here, or a utility knife with Extra blades, there you go. Zip ties, you never know when you're gonna need zip ties. We use these uh, quite frequently for a variety of items. 
So uh, an extra package of zip ties here, and these are 11 inch, 100 zip ties. And in the bag here, you can't see it that well, but it is a socket set and an assortment of screwdrivers with the, uh, the tips. It has a star tip, flat tips, hex tips, and square tipped screwdrivers as well, screwdriver tips. And the next item here, a pair of wire strippers. Uh, that'll go with your uh, electrical repairs. A set of Allen wrenches, hex Allen wrenches on their own little uh, key ring. So that's handy, handy way to keep them secure. An assortment of mini fuses here from 5 amp all the way up to 30 amp. And a handy dandy storage bag. So that's what's in the box. And here's a little closer view of the storage pouch. All open here, it has uh, three on one side, three side pockets, another three side pockets over here, as well as several pockets on each side of the interior to, uh, to store the goodies. And now that we have all the tools laid out here, and a couple of them in the bag there, uh, but one, one thing uh, I like to do, and it's a, a highly recommended when you buy a tool, particularly a tool you wanna be able to use in, in case of emergency or in case of a on the road breakdown where you can't go and get another one, uh, just test it out and make sure it actually works. So we're gonna go through and test a few of these things. Some of them are pretty simple to test and uh, some of them uh, are a little bit more complex, but overall not too difficult to test just to make sure that they work. Now this headlamp, uh, it says, try me right there on it. The nice thing about this, you don't even have to open up the packaging if you want to leave it packaged and only use it for emergencies. It has a little on-off button that's easily accessible. It does take three AAA, ba uh, three A batteries, AAA batteries, uh, but it comes preloaded with them as well. So we're going to try it out in one click. There's the light. Second click, a little bit dimmer light. And third click is the flasher. And then it's off. So that one works. We're going to put it in the bag. Now the multimeter. Uh, takes a little bit more uh, work to test, but basically uh, we've put the red lead in the appropriate socket and the black lead in the comm socket on the multimeter and put it in the appropriate electrical outlet socket here. And this is a 120 outlet and you can see it is testing roughly 122, 123 uh, volts of alternating current electricity. So that part of it works. And our next test is on the uh, 12 volt side. And I have it here just uh, using my standard lawnmower battery here, which I know is 12 volts. And it starts uh, just fine. I put the leads on both. And you can see there, uh, it is a bit of a challenge to, to record the video with this and, and get the leads on both. But you'll see we're getting the 12, 12.3 volts. So uh, it appears to be working. So the multimeter is ready to go in the box. So one thing before I put it in there, just as a highlight, uh, it does have a slide on off switch and uh, many uh, multimeters do have um, an auto off. If you forget and leave it on, uh, it will save your battery and switch off. But unfortunately this one does not have that feature. So just a reminder, always make sure you uh, switch it off uh, before you put it away or you'll wind up with a a dead battery. Now it does say it does take a, a nine volt battery, lasts about 150 hours. It does have a, a small one half amp fuse inside of it as well. And you access those by taking these, uh, these two screws out here in the back. You can't really see down in the hole too well, but there is a screw, screw head down there. You just take the two screws out and replace the nine volt battery in the device. And using the same uh, lawnmower battery, we're gonna test this voltage continuity and current tester. It's basically a test light. 
And over on the back side, it does say, only use this on six or 12 volt circuits. So you have a number of those in your, uh, your RV, primarily uh, 12 volt circuits and your battery. And this just text, tests to see do we have good uh, continuity, are we getting uh, connections. But I'm just gonna test the light to see that it works here. So I've got my clamp on the ground and I'm gonna test the probe to the hot wire and there the light comes on. So the tool works. And the next thing I'm gonna test is this uh, tire gauge. And I have a uh, tire gauge that I have already tested here and works on my truck. And you know, it cal it's calibrated to match what the uh, interior tire pressure monitors say. So I'm gonna use this as well as the new gauge and see if they measure it correctly. Now, as you notice, this is a dial gauge, but uh, it also has a nice feature that actually will hold the pressure on the dial. Once I test it, you'll see the, the dial goes up there, and it's right at 40 PSI. And using my conventional stick tire gauge, it also shows right at 40. So the gauge works great. All right, as we make our way around, we're going to take a closer look at some of the other supplies they give you. And we'll uh, first take a look at these fuses. I mentioned earlier, uh, these were both the mini and the regular. Actually, they are the regular size blade fuses. And so, uh, what's the difference? Well, take a look here. Here's the, the regular ones, and I'll set them up against a mini blade fuse as well. And you can see they're uh, quite a bit smaller. Uh, what I suggest is, yes, these uh, regular size blade fuses work on most uh, RVs and the fuse boxes there, but also some of those RV fuse boxes, uh, I would just suggest you take a look at those, see if you do have any of the mini blade fuses and uh, the smaller ones, as you see here, the red one on the right, and get an assortment of uh, those that meet your needs for your fuse box. So. Uh, Anyway, just a, a tip there. These blade fuses is a great assortment that they provide. Uh, just have a look at your equipment. Make sure they all fit. You don't have any needs for uh, a different uh, uh, size of fuse being the, the mini fuses. All right, working our way on down on the electrical front. They also provide you a 158-piece set of these twist-type wire connectors. And uh, while these will work uh, in a pinch, and that's really what this is, is a, uh, a, an emergency uh, roadside or a campsite uh, short-term fix as well, these will work to connect a couple of wires. If you happen to get one wire pinched or cut in half or whatever, and need to splice it uh, back together or connect it uh, back together, these will work. And these will work for 16 and 14 gauge wires. Uh, given that our rigs do roll down the road in most cases uh, and are moved around. There is another type of connector which is actually a little bit more secure uh, in my opinion than the twist top connectors and less likely to come untwisted and it is a, uh, a clip top connector and actually uh, our rig uh, manufactured by Forest River uh, actually uh, uses these clip connectors and all of the connections uh, of the 12 volt wiring and even the, the 120 volt wiring as well. And basically you, this one is a, a two wire connector. You just insert uh, each of the bare wires of what you're trying to, to join and close the clips and that's it. They snap closed and it is secure. So uh, I encourage you to have both. Well, I have both the twist type and the clip type connectors. You can pick these up at the local big box retailers as well. And the next thing in the kit for a little closer look is this uh, screw assortment, 230 screws, uh, and that will keep you busy for a long time. Again, you need to hold something together on a temporary basis. These are self-tapping uh, screws and uh, as well, mainly just meant for temporary hold. For things you have outside your rig, uh, these are zinc uh, screws, so they will rust. Um, the suggestion would be have an assortment of outdoor rated uh, screws you'll find on on most of the rigs those screws are a square headed uh, outdoor rated uh, black coated screw so you might pick up some of those your local big box retailer as well 
as well as inside, you'll find most of your, your furniture and cabinets and so forth are held together with the, uh, the square head furniture screw, uh, like what I have here uh, shown. And I have an assortment of these also available local big box retailer uh, that actually work for, are designed for uh, connecting wood. You see the threads are a little more coarse and it has a large pan head uh, to connect. So this will be more like the ones that are holding your cabinets together. But again, what Flipper provides here uh, will work for you in a pinch. You need to hold something together temporarily until you can get it to um, uh, a certified uh, repair shop or uh, back to where your, your normal tools are. Uh, but just a couple of suggestions on this. And just a closer look at the zip ties, 100 pack, 11 inch, uh, the label wire ties, but I call them zip ties. And uh, they come in a sealed bag that doesn't have a zipper uh, zipped. So I typically put these, wind up putting these in a, a Ziploc uh, resealable uh, plastic bag. And because once you open these, then they'll uh, start creeping out uh, all over your toolbox. But that's just a suggestion here. Otherwise, uh, these all look great. And a closer look now at the tools they provided to you. And uh, first is this uh, ratcheting screwdriver and the ratchet settings are there right on the, uh, the stem, forward and backwards, so uh, that works well. It is a, a hex insert and all of these screwdriver tip inserts work fine with it. And they provide you with this last one on the end is to work with this assortment of sockets. And it's a set of both uh, metric as well as SAE uh, sockets. A variety of uh, small sizes there for you up to uh, 3 8 inch. And uh, all these seem to be in, in order. Uh, good thing about the screwdriver heads, you do have a, a variety of sizes of the star bits as well as standard blade and Phillips. And uh, it does not provide uh, a square tipped bit. I thought earlier it did provide a square tipped bit, uh, which is what you'll need for most of your screw fixtures on your RV and travel trailer. So uh, just, just a tip there, uh, suggestion is uh, make sure you pick up um, bits from your local retailer as well, square tip bits to keep any of those screws that might have come loose uh, on your existing rig that are uh, square tipped as well. And the next tool is a standard pair of wire strippers, uh, which you can use for your minor electrical repairs. Uh, these are your basic uh, wire strippers uh, used to cut the wire, uh, to crimp, it has a crimp tool on the end, and the stripper section here in the middle from anywhere from 10 gauge up to 20, 22 gauge. So uh, these all seem to to work and I just wanted to make sure that they uh, they worked uh, well and were available for use. I do have my own pair of these as well, but uh, these are good. The, uh, the blade they provide uh, is your, just your typical extendable and retractable blade. It has the standard locking mechanism and they provide you with 10 extra blades. So that's uh, kind of a neat feature. Uh, uh, as well, you have 10 extra blades in this uh, nice little holder. And the last tool in the toolkit is this assortment of Allen wrenches, uh, hex wrenches. And they are uh, SAE size, as far as I can tell. Uh, the larger ones, uh, the 3 8 all the way down to uh, 3 16 all have the size stamped on them. The smaller ones, uh, there are five smaller ones, don't have the size stamped on them because it would be obviously <laughs> a little small to be able to read. Uh, it comes with this uh, nifty little uh, spring, uh, spring catch attachment for each of the uh, Allen wrenches. However, uh, for the largest one, this uh, 3 8 it is quite a, uh, a heavy tool and it's just a bit heavy for the, the spring. I can slide it into the spring attachment and lift it up and uh, it kind of comes out there. So suggestion on this, I just put them in a Ziploc bag, but uh, otherwise, uh, overall, nice assortment of Allen wrenches here. And there you have it. All the tools fit neatly in the bag. And so about uh, maybe a five pound bag, so not overly weighted. 
And uh, thanks again, Lippert, for uh, sending this out to me. And I look forward to lots of good use of it in the future.